The dot product, introduced in the previous video, is the only general vector product. In any dimension, any Rn, I can take the dot product of two vectors to get a scalar that tells me about the relative directions of the two vectors, a scalar that measures their similarity. There are no other general vector products. However, there is a special case in R3, the cross product. Here's the definition. For two three-dimensional vectors, u and v, I write both as coordinates. Then the cross product, written with this old-school multiplication symbol, is another vector in R3 whose coordinates are these strange multiplications and subtractions. This is just a pattern you have to learn to use, though of course you don't have to memorize it, you can reference it in the notes or other places. Of note, in the first entry of the cross product, only the second and third coefficients of the originals are in use, and similarly for the next two entries. The cross product outputs a vector. Unlike the dot product, which took two vectors and gave a scalar, this product produces another vector. For this reason, in some context, the cross product is called the vector product. And this is a pretty poor terminology for obvious region, reasons, which is why I don't use it in the course, but it's good to be aware. The cross product on the face of it is pretty strange. This is a weird mix of multiplication and subtraction. Why does this pattern do anything useful? As for the deeper reasons of why, and why anyone thought of these combinations at all, that will have to wait for other courses. For now though, I can show you what the cross product does, what utility it has, and what properties it has. First, let me talk about the direction of the cross product. From last video, I know that perpendicular vectors are identified by the dot product and specifically when the dot product is zero. From the equation of the cross product, I can use coordinates, not shown here, to check that the dot product of either vector u and v with the cross product is zero. That means that u times v is perpendicular to both u and v. This is the main thing the cross product accomplishes. It makes a vector that is perpendicular to both inputs. And this is why the cross product is unique to three dimensions. In three dimensions, once you have two directions, there is only one third direction remaining. The cross product finds that direction. Being able to efficiently construct a third perpendicular direction is a very valuable operation, useful in many geometric situations. The dot product was related to the cosine of the angle between the vectors. The cross product is related to the sine of the angle. Specifically, the length of the cross product, length of u cross v, is equal to the length of u multiplied by the length of v multiplied by the sine of the angle between them. Now let me talk about the other properties of the cross product. It does in fact distribute over vector addition. This is, like so many other I've mentioned so far, accomplished by writing the vectors out in components, doing algebra to move from the right to the left, and the algebra is more involved this time, but the idea of the proof is still the same. Like the dot product, it makes sense to call this a product because it distributes over addition as I expect a multiplication to do. For commutativity though, the story is different. Here's the formula, again for the cross product. Notice the subtractions. If I switch the order of u and v, then the u2 v3 term in the first component would become negative v3 u2, and the negative u3 v2 term will become v2 u3. The signs will change. This is the first multiplication where order matters. If I interchange the order of the cross product, the sign changes. A product that has this property is called anti-commutative. The cross product is an anti-commutative operation. Geometrically, I just said that the cross product gives the unique third direction, but that unique direction could point in either way along a line. This switching of sign reflects that reality. u times v is the unique direction perpendicular to both u and v, but so is v times u. They just point in the opposite direction from each other. Finally, there is one strange implication of this anti-commutativity. The cross product of anything with itself is the zero vector. 
You can see this in the algebra as well, where all the terms will cancel off. This also makes geometric sense. If I cross a vector with itself, there aren't two directions, there's only one. That means there isn't a unique third direction, and the cross product can't do what it's designed to do, and it just sends back the zero vector.